Hey guys, Dantix here, back with some more Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We have a ton more information for you in the game, which honestly has me hyped. We can expect the release holiday 2020, and there'll be a cross-generation game coming to Xbox Series X, Xbox One, PlayStation 5, 4, and PC. This is going to be a long video covering a lot of content like settlements, map size, gear and ability systems, customizable minions you can send to your friends, longboats, mounts and more. So buckle up and drop a like and comment to help this video along. I really appreciate the support. So according to an interview with the creative director, Ashraf Ismail, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, by Game Informer, Valhalla will be set in Norway and England. The hero, who's named Eivor, can be male or female, is a Viking raider that will leave Norway for the rolling hills of England on a personal journey to reach a particular place that Ismail can't talk about for spoiler reasons. This happens quite early in the game because, much like the series Vikings, the Nordish people come to England not simply to conquer, but to settle. Norway is beautiful, but it was a very harsh place to live. There's war, there's a lack of space to grow. The idea of finding a better place to thrive was very important. This settlement aspect will play a huge part in the game, which I'll go through soon. However, the creative director discusses how the main character will be balancing their need to be a lone wolf, striving for ambition and glory, but also balancing their community's needs. When does your own ambition overwrite the needs of your people? This is a little bit more into the personal journey of Eivor. So the name Valhalla is significant to that journey in terms of this ambition. You'd think that Assassin's Creed is capitalizing on the success of Skyrim and the new God of War in terms of setting, but the creative director mentioned that on a personal level when he was 12, he read a novel by Michael Crichton about an Arab interacting with Vikings and developed a personal connection to it. Perhaps we'll see some interactions between cultures in this as well. However, this era is ripe to storytell, and regardless of what they do, I'm sure the scope will be epic. Speaking of scope, we can expect the playable area to be quite big. It's set in the 9th century England and focused around four major kingdoms, Wessex, Northumbria, East Angela, and Mercia. It's a huge chunk of England and it'll contain three major cities. Jondon, Winchester and Jorvik, which is now called York in our time. The creative director also mentions that there are a ton of towns as well as Norway. From this I gather that Norway will simply be an area to travel back to, perhaps for base building, recruiting missions and so forth. England will be the main event and you'll probably be spending most of your time there. A main antagonist will be King Alfred of Wessex, later known as Alfred the Great. So in terms of what the team is striving for, to deliver the Viking experience within the Assassin's Creed world. That statement is very important for us. They want to deliver all of the features, systems, and narrative to support that while also building the Assassin's Creed world, in which is the conflict between Assassins and Templars. However, in this period, they go by a different name. It's unclear if the giant English warrior the main character fights in the trailer is a Templar, but I suspect so. I mentioned settlements before, and it's time to dive deeper. First, you land in England with the intention of settling your people in a new land, and building a thriving settlement is key to this experience. This is apparently going to be your motivation to do other activities, like raiding, and it serves a very important function. Every building that you place has gameplay value. Every character that you can bring into your settlement has some kind of value to Eivor and the settlement. There's customization features for the settlement as well, and we can see that in the Collector's Edition. So this means you'll be gathering resources and supplies and choosing what to build. Buildings will provide you things, and I'm guessing there'll be resource-based buildings, ones that upgrade your warriors, training, and more. It is confirmed, however, that you'll be able to build the barracks, blacksmith, and even a tattoo parlor. The settlement is really your home in the world. You grow this place in terms of both buildings and people. You always start in your settlement, and then you go out into the world. You go on a journey. These journeys bring back different things. Sometimes it's other people. Sometimes it's resources you might need. Sometimes it's surprises that I can't get into. The idea is that it's really the heart of your journey. This is the place you come back to to customize your character and do a lot of things for Eivor. This settlement is unlike anything we've seen in the past. It's quite key to the motivation of the journey and to the world itself. So no doubt you feel the pull of venturing out and gathering materials in order to grow. To give you a motivation, there has to be a robust system for base building behind it. On the Ubisoft website, it says, claim the riches of your enemy's lands for your clan and expand your influence far beyond your growing settlement. So no doubt there'll be consequences of your choices, raid, pillage, but at a cost. 
The English people aren't going to stand around and let you coexist. They're going to be extremely hostile. So in order for you to develop your settlement, you're going to need to go on the aforementioned raids. To raid, you need the iconic longship and a crew. We see such a combo in the trailer, but apparently you meet both of these out in the world, including characters you go on journeys with. They're called Joms Vikings, and they'll be customized and built. Apparently, a lot of effort has gone into these raiders, and they'll be the people who live in your settlements. However, your longship is extremely vital to your experience. The team wanted to make sure that you as a player felt the longship was part of this world. They wanted it to be incorporated in a way that doesn't need to be spoken. The thing about the Viking Age was that these Vikings gained success because they had these Ferraris called longships and they had these highways called rivers that no one drove on and they were able to pedal to the metal drive wherever they want and get behind enemy lines. Eventually the Saxons put up defenses on the highways but the team wanted the player to feel the raw power of having these Ferraris and being able to take it all over England. So it's heavily leaned on for a mode of traversal but it also lets you bring your raiding party with you which you can heavily customize and there's apparently a lot of surprises with the longship itself as well. So you'll have access to raids fairly early and will be able to customize and build onto your longship and crew by growing your settlement. What would Assassin's Creed be without assaulting heavily fortified areas? So they're back. However, the creative director mentioned that these are big set piece moments wrapped up in the narrative and you'll obviously bring your crew with you. This is something we found in our research that happened quite a lot. So we need to find a place for that in game and give it a lot of value and make it shine. These are really incredible battles. All this is good and well, but how can you raid and assault during your Viking fantasy without the combat being solid. And we can't claim to create the ultimate Viking experience if we don't nail combat. So combat is visceral, brutal. We want to make sure every swing of an ax, every defense with a shield feels good. A lot of effort has gone into the weaponry of this period, into the enemies. So what that says to me is they value the weight of weapons, swings and collisions, as well as the sound design that goes alongside it. Honestly, that makes combat for me, and it was it was why a God of War did so well, because every swing had weight, the impacts felt like impacts, and the visual and audible rewards were fantastic. Some of the key terms we were using early in the project were visceral, crunchy, brutal, weighty. We wanted every swing of an axe to mean something. You can feel it, a lot of effort went into that sense of impact. With this comes the types of weapons you can use, including famous ones. For instance, the Viking round shield. So we have the round shield, we have the tower shield, we have flails, spears and bearded axes, the Dane axes and the long swords. We wanted the combat to shine through the weaponry that made this time period unique and exciting. So naturally with this and the time period of the berserkers, the devs have introduced dual wielding. You can dual wield almost any combination of weapons, including axes and swords. You can even dual wield two shields. There will be different synergies to consider and the team have put a lot of effort into weapons and abilities. For example, in the trailer, you can see the lead throwing an ax and that is an ability you can gain. What would these mechanics be with our good enemies? So there'll be a lot of variety in enemy types. A lot of variety, a lot of unique capacities, a lot of surprises in the ways enemies can use the environment and one another against the player. We want to make sure if you've been playing for 10, 15, 20 hours that you're still being surprised by what the enemies can do to the world and with one another. We can see here an English troop swinging a flail at the player character. It's not a very common weapon type in games like this. So like mentioned, you can customize your own Viking Raiders from hairstyles all the way to gear. You can share this custom raider with your friends or online. If your raider goes along with another player, you'll reap in-game rewards. I think this is a really interesting way to encourage you to interact with others and enjoy the NPC customization aspect of the game. When the systems work well together, you'll find yourself enjoying each aspect more. Like this could really encourage you to base build to get access to more customization options or gear. So what about gear? The team wants something that's more part of the world and the theme. Every piece of gear you find is unique. You can upgrade each piece of gear. If you wish to carry the same piece of gear to the end of the game, you can. Or if you want to collect everything, that's up to you. 
This is vastly different to what we saw in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, wherein the gear you got from the uh, Collector's Edition became obsolete very quickly. In fact, if we look at the Ultimate Pack in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we see the Berserker's Gear Pack, which gives you access to an axe, which will scale with you and can be taken to the endgame, a unique Raven, Shield, Berserker Armor, and Wolf Mount. We've seen weird and wacky mounts before in the series, but a giant direwolf to ride on sounds the most badass. In the settlement pack, we seem to have unique buildings, but if these are just skins to already existing buildings remains unseen because we know we can customize them. However, these are clearly buildings dedicated to the heathen gods. Then we have the Berserker longship and a set of runes, both of which we have no further information on. An educated guess though would be that runes are forms of modifications to your weapons and your armor. There will also be bonus missions in this pack available at launch, as well as a season pass. So we talked about gear, what about abilities and skills? Well, in this area there is also a revamp. Players will have a quite large skill graph that they navigate through throughout the journey of the main character. This graph will contain new skills and gameplay elements to fine tune the kind of viking you want to be. It's mentioned you can be a more incognito viking, probably suggesting a form of stealth which you'd expect in Assassin's Creed game, especially with the hidden blade being revealed and all, but also a get out there and throw your axes around viking. Everything from abilities to skills to weaponry, we have a fresh new take on progression that feels is anchored in the world and in the viking fantasy we're trying to achieve. The skill graph isn't drastically different from skill trees we've seen in the past, but it has a different aesthetic and the point of difference will come from the types of skills you can have and the synergies. It'll be less about progression in terms of levels, but rather in terms of skills. The more skills you have, the more powerful you become. The mechanics around the world will fill in around that. There will be a rating of power given, which is a combination of your skills and your gear, but it's mostly going to be about the skills. This also suggests that enemies themselves won't have particular levels. I personally prefer this as many open world kinds of games really struggle with power when there's a hardcore leveling system. So I mentioned the game will further the narrative of Assassins and Templars, which are called Hidden Ones and the Order of Ancients in this time period, but it's confirmed they are an important part. At a certain point, Eivor's personal motivations will align with some assassin characters that we meet. So there will be some alignment there and they will work together in a certain fashion. Now we're starting to get close to spoiler territory, but players can expect a really cool link. Again, I don't want to get into what systems or features or narratives is linked just yet, but our mantra when we start this game was the Viking experience within the Assassin's Creed world. And both of those experiences carry a lot of weight and are crucial to one another. So to wrap this up, I mentioned at the start that you can play as a female Viking. Well, here is the best look at her we have in the Collector's Edition model. No doubt we'll get gameplay of her in action soon. So what do you guys think of this massive amount of info I just dropped on your head? Are you more or less excited for Valhalla and what are you looking forward to the most? Let me know below. I'm personally excited about the theme. I've always loved the Viking fantasy and I want to build a powerful two-handed axe to hack through waves of filthy Saxon warriors while building my base for powerful Viking raiders to join me in battle. So thanks for watching guys and for everything AC, keep your eyes peeled to this channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell button for updates and I'll see you guys soon.